this is a single line. There is no mechanical advantage. You pull down and you go up the rope. It's one to one. Every foot of rope that you pull down on is a foot of rope that you go up. No mechanical advantage. Your T are your single line. Now with some magic, we take that same single line and we have a lever. And I think sometimes a lever is a lot easier for us to understand than pulleys. So with a lever, I think it's pretty obvious to everybody. If it, you have a pound over here and a pound over there, you're going to have two pounds in the middle. Now this is where the work is actually being done. And this lever is where the work is being done. I can put a handle on this end and I can, I can grab it with the handle and I can manipulate the whole lever from here but I'm still having the work done on the lever. The lever is doing the work. This handle is just helping me reach the lever to do the work. I can hold this lever or I can hold this handle anywhere I want but it doesn't affect the fact that there is no mechanical advantage with this. I can hold it down here. I can hold it here. I can stand. If my hand was a person standing, I can do this. I can do that. It doesn't make any difference. It's still no mechanical advantage. One side moves, and the other side moves the equal amount. So this is just a handle. Okay, so imagine this is a wheelbarrow. And again, it's a lever. I'm lifting a two-pound load in the center of the wheelbarrow. But if I have a two pound load in the center of the wheelbarrow, I only have to lift a pound here, and the other pound is on the other side of the wheelbarrow. So there is a mechanical advantage in lifting this. I have to lift this twice as far. If I want that to go up six inches, I have to lift this a foot. All right, so here is our lever again. Now we're gonna convert this from a lever into a pulley system. Shazam! Now we have the same configuration, the same everything. There's the two, two sides that are still doing the work. Just like in the lever, there's one pound here, one pound here, and it applies a two pound load in the center. If I pull down one foot, that other side goes up a foot. It's exactly like the lever was, but now we're just pulling the load through the pulley. All right, so on our pulley system, again, we determined that if we pull down, if we pull down a foot or six inches or whatever, these distances will be exactly the same. Now, I can extend my handle that I was using earlier, and I can hold that with a handle and make the same adjustment. It doesn't make any difference. Again, this is the handle, and this is where the work is being done. Again, uh, no mechanical advantage. I, all right, so just like in the wheelbarrow on the lever, if I lift up a foot, that only goes up six inches. So I have the mechanical advantage. Now, the difference with the pulley, is that now I can change the direction of this pulley and if I go a foot that still only moves six inches. So again this is just redirecting that line so I can pull it straight up, I can pull it off to the side, or I can pull it straight down. Again if I pull straight down a foot that only goes a half of a foot. So this is where all the work is being done in this section of the rope. I have, say I have four feet of rope right here and this is two feet down. I have to pull all four feet of that rope. All four feet of that rope has to come through the pulley. All of this rope has to have traveled through the pulley in order to get that work done.
in order to get the two feet, I had to travel four feet through the pulley. It didn't matter if I traveled four feet through the pulley straight up. It didn't matter if I traveled four feet through the pulley straight down. It has to travel four feet through the pulley to get the work done. Now if I want, I can put a handle. I can put a handle on that and get the same work done. But I'm just doing this, this part right here is just a handle to get to the work. The actual work is being done by the ropes and the pulley. All right, just like the other example, now if if I pull if I pull down if I pull down a foot, that goes the same distance. It goes up a foot. Now the redirect again. If I pull a foot this direction, that goes up the same distance. And if I pull up. It goes the same distance. There's no mechanical advantage in what I'm doing right now. This is a hauling system. It's not a climbing system. And again, still, no mechanical advantage. Alright, so in order for me to climb here, I have to pull that much rope. I have to pull two feet of rope in order to ascend one foot. And we'll see how that works. As I pull this, there's my rope. There's my two feet of rope right here. That's what I had to pull. And that's what I pulled. That much rope just went through my hand. So that made it two feet of rope had to be pulled in order to go up one foot. Right here. If we're talking about the top of the ring, right here. If I'm going up with the rope, I'll be pulling, and my hand will be going up with the rope. It keeps going up with the rope. All of that rope has now gone through my hand, and all of that rope has done the work to ascend one foot. So two feet for one foot. So two to one climbing system. So again we have a hauling system. If I'm over here pulling somebody up or if I'm up here, let's say I'm up here pulling this climber up, I have to pull my rope up a foot in order to get that climber just to go six inches. Now if I'm standing over here, this is the same thing. I have to pull a foot in order to get the climber to go up six inches. Or if I'm standing on the ground, or let's say I'm standing here first of all, I have to pull that same foot and the climber only goes up six inches. Now it doesn't matter, I can be standing down here on the ground and I pull a foot and that climber has still only gone six inches. I can be standing down here and I'm doing the same the same one foot pull from here only takes the climber up six inches. Alright, and that is two to one mechanical advantage with a hauling system. Again, there's a big difference between a hauling system and a climbing system. And in a climbing system, in order to get the top of this pinto pulley up to my revolver, I've got to go up with that rope, and so I've got to process, I've got to use all three of these pieces of rope to get there. So as I go up, I'm climbing, I'm climbing, and I'm climbing, and I'm climbing, and I'm climbing, and I finally get to that point. I have used all of that. I've used from this piece of tape to the bottom piece of the tape. I've used all three sections of that rope to get me to that point. It makes it a three to one mechanical advantage for a climber. Now using the same configuration, I haven't changed the configuration of the ropes at all. If I'm a hauler and I'm standing right here, I only have to process two sections. That's these two sections of the rope. This just becomes a handle to get the work done. 
I can be standing here, I can be standing over here, I can be standing up there in order to get the work done, but I only have to process these two lengths of rope to get that climber to the destination. So from here, I pull, I pull, I pull. He gets to the clock top. There is those two sections of rope right there that I processed to get the climber to that point. But I'm the hauler. Again, I could have, I could be standing, I could be standing over here and do that same thing and pull the same two sections of the rope right there. There's the two sections of the rope. I only pulled those two sections of the rope to get that climber up there as a hauler. This part of the rope, it never went through my hands. I was standing over here when I did it. So I never processed this part of the rope. I only processed these two parts of the rope. That's why with a hauler, it's a two to one. And with a climber, it's a three to one. So we're differentiating between a hauling system and a climbing system. The way you tell the difference with a simple or a compound pulley system is that if the pulley comes to you, if this pulley comes to you, then it is a climbing system and that leg will count. In this case, we have one, two, three legs. As I climb, and don't, and you know, everybody gets confused about traveling pulleys and moving pulleys and all those kind of things. And what I will say is that if that pulley comes to you, then it counts. If I'm at the climber now and I'm going up the rope, that pulley is getting closer to me. Every time I pull some rope through my hands, that pulley is getting closer to me. Now I've actually arrived at the pulley as a climber. Right here is my hand. I have arrived at that pulley. I have, that pulley came to me or I went to the pulley, but nonetheless it came to me. That means that leg counts. Yes, as a hauler, I'm down here pulling and I'm lifting that load, whatever it is, that pulley is not coming to me anymore. It's staying the same distance. And so as I get to that point where the climber has, or the load has reached, I'm still here. That pulley never came to me. And because it never came to me, I can't count this leg as being processed. It never, it was never used to do the work. Same thing, again, if I was standing over here and I pull all that through my hands, I can't pull this part of the rope through my hands while I'm getting that work done to count it. So those two legs are the only two legs that count. This doesn't count. So that's why it's a difference between a climbing system where you count the three legs and a hauling system where you only count the two legs. And this works for simple pulley systems and a compound pulley system. Again, we established that if I were to be a hauler and this was a load, or I was trying to pull a climber up from the ground, if I pull down a foot, the climber goes up a foot. There's no mechanical advantage. Also, this cambium saver is a pulley. But that pulley will never come to me, it never gets any closer to me. I can pull and I can pull until the climber finally gets to that cambium saver and this part of that rope will never, never come to me. I was never able to process this part of the rope. So that being a hauling system, you only count the one leg. So it's a one for one, there's no mechanical advantage for the hauler. Now, if I'm a climber, again, as I pull down on this rope, I continue to get closer to that pulley, and since the pulley is coming to me, it is, becomes basically a moving pulley. It's coming to me. Because it came to me, I was able to process all of that rope that went through both of those legs.
So that's the difference again here. We have a two to one as a climber and no mechanical advantage when it comes to a hauler. So this part is a two to one mechanical advantage. All right, so here's our, here's our two to one mechanical advantage that we just talked about being the climber has a two to one mechanical advantage just going up on a doubled rope. If all we do is add another pulley, now when the climber pulls down on this, all of a sudden we have those three legs that we saw from that SRT configuration where it was a three to one. So now we have a three to one multiplying a two to one, making this a six to one mechanical advantage. These two legs get processed, and these three legs all get processed. Makes it a compound uh, pulley system. And you can see that as the climber goes up, an awful lot of rope has to move to get that to come through. Now again, this being a moving pulley, it's moving towards the climber, it counts for those three legs. So again, that's a six to one mechanical advantage. Let me use this fiddle block as an example of how to determine what our mechanical advantage is. This can be either a five to one or a four to one depending on its configuration. And I'll talk you through this without changing the ropes or the pulleys whatsoever. For example, let's say we want to use this to pull a tree down or tighten a porter wrap. This is what's going to be moving. This is our tree that we want to pull down. So we have one, two, three, four, five lines connected between these two pulleys. And since this tree, this pulley is going to be moving towards us, this particular line gets counted. Now let's change the configuration and let's put this anchor up in the tree. So now this is anchored up into the tree and this is where our load is. What we want to do is pull this load up into the tree. So we're going to stand on the ground and pull on this line and our load is going to go up into the tree. But this pulley now is not going to get closer to us. So we cannot process this length of leg, this leg of the line. So it makes it a four to one. Now without taking that pulley out of the tree, let's connect ourselves to this pulley here. So now we become the load. And we pull ourselves up into that tree. As we pull ourselves up into the tree and we're connected to this pulley and we're pulling on this line, we get closer now to that pulley. So we have now processed all five sections of this climbing line. Now making it a five to one. I never even took anything out of the tree. Again, this is anchored into the tree. This is our load. If we're standing here just pulling the load up and we continue to stand here and we never get closer to that pulley, it's a four to one. If we attach ourselves to this pulley and make ourselves the load and pull on this line, then we do indeed get closer to that pulley, making it a five to one mechanical advantage climbing system. Again, four to one mechanical advantage hauling system, five to one mechanical advantage climbing system. All right, this is another good example that I've taken from a catalog. But let's say we're pulling on that tree. We want to pull that tree down and we have this leg anchored to the back of our truck. As we pull, we have three lines that we're going to count. As we pull on our line right here, this pulley comes towards us. It gets closer to us. Because it's getting closer to us, we count all three legs. One, two, three. So if we're pulling that tree down, it's a three to one mechanical advantage. 
Now let's change the scenario just slightly and let's say that this tree is now the anchor and we want to pull our truck out of the mud. So in this case that pulley will not get closer to us and we count only the two lines. So it would be a two to one mechanical advantage if we're trying to pull our truck out of the mud here and it's a three to one mechanical advantage if our truck is the anchor and we're trying to pull the tree down. I didn't change any of the pulleys or the configuration. Again, if the pulley comes towards you that you are holding in your hand, you count that leg. So here's a good example of a 3 to 1 and a 2 to 1. Now let's take this one step further. Let's say that this is connected up in the tree. You're climbing an SRT climbing line. As you're going up SRT, you make your Z rig. Now again, this is where my saddle's connected. This line is in my hand. As I pull on this line, I'm going up. As I go up, I get closer to that pulley. So now I count all three lines. It's a three to one mechanical advantage if it's a climbing system.